Heatian Charizard. Oh. We're going Radiant Heatran in this deck. Yeah, Heatran's a really interesting one. It's almost a little bit more passive than the Radiant Charizard, but it can get even higher damage output if you continually use Magma Basin on that Radiant Heatran. It can get absurd amounts of damage onto the field, so that's another great Pokemon to track throughout the game and could be a spanner in the works for Tord. Absolutely. It does 70 damage for each damage counter on it, but Magma Basin will both accelerate energy to it right. and damage it so you can kind of leave it on the bench and go look th this heatran is gonna be a problem for you feel free to gust it up and ko it don't worry about my charizard v max in the active that's fine and i think that's what jose's going for here it's very much a case of i've got my big bad charizard huge hp huge damage you know a v max which we know are very much waning in the format at the moment is mm. more v star than v max but you've got that heatran and you've got to think that's going to be just kind of chilling on the bench ready for the late game, almost forcing your opponent to ignore it or have to deal with it and ignore your attacker, basically putting them in a situation where they're just not going to be able to make the right decision. And I love matchups like these. Neither player, I'm sure, has tested against the other. <laughs> I mean, they've both come in with a very specific few decks that they're trying to beat, and now they're just up against something that they've completely uh, not expected to see. So uh, they're pretty much just down there coming up with game plans on the fly, and I think that's always a great thing to see. Oh, yeah. We've, we've seen Arceus Charizard. We've seen that on stream at some of the big events this year, this season. It's not a common deck, but it's one we've seen. We've seen it on stream. I follow this game obsessively closely <laughs> and I am checking results constantly and I follow like everyone I can think of. I don't think I've ever seen anyone play Vikavolt Ludicolo. That's his news to me. Yeah, and he's also got the Radiant Charizard as that sort of like late game or mid game uh, pivot where he just becomes an all one prize attacking deck. So it's going to be really interesting to see how Tord navigates this. We know that Radiant Charizard can hit amazing numbers into the Arceus part of Jose's deck, but the Charizard may be lingering around on the board that little bit longer. Yeah, it's going to be hard to hit. You can one hit KO Pokemon V Star quite nicely with Radiant Charizard. Pokemon V Max, not as easy. Of course, we did see Charizard showcased very nicely with Ross Corfon yesterday on the stream. So Tor's going to be doing a similar kind of thing but with a very different early game, using that Vikavolt V to really make sure that your opponent is slower, that they're not able to get much going, your item locking them. And obviously, your goal here is just beat Palkia in a couple of turns while they're item locked and getting one hit KO'd. Right. It's not so easy against the Charizard, but if item cards weren't important, we wouldn't be playing them. Yeah, and another sneaky 1-1 one -one line in Jose's list is he does play Flying Pikachu VMAX as well. And we've just mentioned Vikavolt V as well as Radiant Charizard. These are the key and main attackers for Tord. So the Flying Pikachu VMAX coming in and denying those basic attackers could also be a big hiccup for him. It could. So we start seeing some prize cards now. Yeah, we've got that Raihan in the discard. Nothing huge there, nothing that really fills me with absolute dread. One of Roxanne, <laughs> but no, nothing terrible. Yeah, pieces here and there, um, but both players, I think, uh, on reflection, can be pretty okay with that. Jose playing a lot of one of Pokemon in his list, as well as Tord, uh, with a few key tech includes as well. But we are kicking things off in round two here. A bit doof start for Jose, who is going to be going first, also has uh, the Arceus and some double turbo energy in hand, so can be very pleased with his opening. Yeah, and we've actually got that Bieber out there to evolve the Bidoof next turn, start yeah. getting that draw engine. I love this start from Hoso. That is a lovely hand. And you're even playing that Evolution Incense nice and early turn one. It's in the past, this has been an awkward play when there's cards like Marnie running around or before that cards like Judge or N. But because they're not seeing much play nowadays, we're seeing this more and more often, people are willing to play it, to stash it in their hand, and that means that your draws are just a tiny bit better next turn, which can make all the difference. So it's a way we've adapted to the lack of hand disruption. Yeah, I really like the choice, to be honest with you. Uh, you proactively thin one card. Uh, you want to try and limit it so you can get maximum draws from the barrel next turn and maybe give yourself that slight uh, extra odds of getting just a natural supporter off the top of your deck. And as soon as you see that Radiant Charizard, even though it's like sometimes a tech include and sometimes a bit part player, you know that it's a combo orientated card. It often is looking for Raihans, it's looking for uh, Claras, these sorts of supporters. And it means that uh, 
they are not going to be mining you quite as often. So Jose can do this in confidence and simply pass it over to Tord here. Yeah, and, and Jose's got everything they need for turn two already, and that is wonderful. So it does look like Tor starting off here. We oh, do have man. the Charizard, but we don't, and that's not a good starter. That is a card you want His hand several is, turns in. It's exactly what I expected. <laughs> it's, it's not good. It's just a load of jank. <laughs> oh, that He's is not just good. passed, actually. Oh, that is really not good. I think that's going to be a turn two win for Jose here because he should be able to get the double turbo energy, get the Arcus V Star, get a pivot on the Bidoof, hit for 200 damage, and that should be the game. And I know we got double turbo is. energy in hand. There's the switch, and that is a very, very quick turn to win from Jose. Tor didn't have another basic, and unfortunately, that's all it took. Oh, that was uh, yucky. I know when you see an out of the box deck, you always think, hey, how's this going to do consistency wise? Is it actually going to get going? It's got multiple stage twos, lots of rare cannons. These lots of reactive supporters, like the only supporter in hand Todd had was that uh, Raihan. Uh, yeah, he had no actions. It's not going to get any easier for Jose Moreira. <laughs> no, I think that's about the easiest win you're ever going to see. And of course, the thing about Arceus V Star is you evolve up into it. Oh, I need a double turbo and I need a switching card. Oh, wait, I've got a V Star power that lets me search for any two cards that I want. So, yeah, that was not a difficult game. Unfortunately for Tord, I mean, but then again, you know, we, we just saw Henry lose a, a very quick, very one-sided game one. Mm. That was our world champion. We've now got our multiple-time international champion losing a very quick game one. And the, the only saving grace here is there's a lot of time left for the next two games. Yeah, that's got to be uh, something that you can consider for Tord. Uh, he can turn this around, of course. He now gets the choice of going first or second. I think oftentimes you even see with these sort of one prize archetypes, especially when you have two Lotad in addition to the four Sobble, he might be choosing to go a second just to get an early keep calling or call for family because he is so uh, reliant on some of these supporter cards. He's playing four copies of the Irida as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him choose to uh, go second either here. He has seen that Jose is playing an Arceus deck though, and sometimes uh, it's still best for you to go first because you know that Jose is not kicking things off until he's getting into his own V-Star. Yeah, and that was the thing we saw in that first game. Turn two, it's very easy for Arceus. If you've got the Arceus V and an energy turn one, then all you need yeah. is the V-Star, and anything else you need, you can grab with the V-Star power, and you've got that 200 damage, accelerating energy, just straight off going on the board. It's, it's absolutely huge, so I agree with you. I think Tord might want to go second, but I don't think you can let the Arceus deck go first. Oh, we, do have a mullig we do have a mulligan here. Yeah, Jose, uh, no playable basic Pokemon in his hand, so he's going to have to reveal it and shuffle it back in for Tord here. I don't know how much more workable his hand is <laughs> on Tord's side of things uh, just yet, so we'll uh, get confirmation of that. Um, but yeah, Tord basically just had to shake it off. It's always a horrible feeling when you just don't get to do a single action. I think the only thing Tord physically could have done that turn was attach a fire energy and pass. Uh, instead, he just chose to pass. Um, but um, you just have to think, respect the deck, respect your testing, and hope that you can get into a better time of this game's two and three. Yeah, I mean, Tord's hand, I know he's got a rare candy, boss's orders, energy search. It's not a phenomenal oh. hand. There might be other cards there that make a difference. We've got the Mulligan card coming out, which could absolutely change things. But from what I peaked of Tord's hand, it wasn't great. The prices are fine. There's nothing in there that terrifies me. One of the two Vikavolt, which is not the yeah. end of the world. So, yeah, we're, we're all right. We're okay for now. But the, the hand, it did not look good. Uh, Jose has priced his one copy of the Barrel, which Ooh, might be a little bit awkward. I don't like that. Also, his Raihan as well uh, sometimes can be a key piece. Um, so we'll see how he's going to navigate this. Makes it even more important for him to find that early energy attachment. But we are kicking things off with a quick mulligan from Tord, and we're in to game two. Tord having to win two on the bounce if he is going to close out this series. And I think it was Jose who actually drew the first card for turn there. So I think uh, Tord is indeed choosing to go second, and it's exactly what I was saying. You just value that keep calling so much. Yeah, and if you do get the keep calling, you get all those basics out. I mean, Tord's a very good player. He knows he's going to be giving up the first prize here, in unless something goes very, very wrong. So you kind of give up the first prize, but you do it for your setup, and you're confident enough that you can kind of bring it back, so to speak. We've got a lovely old-school fossil energy search there. And, I mean, get a water energy, keep calling. Even if the rest of Tord's hand is as bad as we think it might be, at the end of the day, you can still fill your bench. 
Yeah, Tord likes getting water in the, in the discard pile. He plays one copy of Melanie for his Viker Vaults, uh, but also he likes having fire in the discard pile as well. So good to thin the deck of a water energy. It's obviously something he can try and attack with when need be with Zinteleons. He really is limited in his attacking threats. He has the Viker Vault V, he has the Radiant Charizard, and then the Inteleons themselves get involved when they have to. So we will see the water attachments to the Sobble. He is playing a high count of rare candies as well. So um, he is certainly threatening Inteleon on that second turn, if need be. We do definitely have a rare candy in hand. So it does look like we've got Keep Calling. And there is a chance here. And it is just three Sobble. Anything else? That's the gang. That is the gang. That is fair. Thrall Sobble all out, nice and ready to go. And all we're going to need is, you know, potentially if we can get a Drizzle, then we can get an Inteleon next turn, because Tord does have the rare candy in hand, so all he would need is that Inteleon and a basic energy, and that would be enough to actually start attacking with the Inteleon next turn, which would be rather lovely. And Jose, he's got the V star in hand, so we'll at least be seeing, once again, that sort of pivot and just start swinging with the Arceus. He's is already holding on to a Charizard V as well, I believe, as we just see uh, Tord finishing shuffling up uh, off of the Keep Calling. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty standout turn for Jose as well. I imagine, uh, because he's already seen the Radiant Charizard in game one, it's the only card he saw from Tord, um, that he wants to weave in the flying Pikachu uh, V Max as well. So I imagine part of this star birth will be grabbing the Pikachu V here. Quite possibly. Of course, at this stage, this could just be the Radiant Charizard deck that we saw from Ross Corfon yesterday. Because all we've seen is Inteleon and Charizard, so it absolutely could be that deck. I don't think, until he sees it, I don't think Jose is going to be thinking, ah, oh, this is the Inteleon deck. Right. But I think oh, it doesn't really matter because, like you say, you get that flying Pikachu and that's going to block the Charizard, but it's also going to end up blocking the Viker Vault as well. So. That is going to be a problem that Tor's going to have to try and navigate here. Jose eyeing up uh, an air balloon as a pivot option for this Badoop as well as a Marnie. It's another great thing you can do in the early stages of the game to reduce the hand size of an Inteleon player because oftentimes the Shady Deals are great at cherry picking bits and bobs. But if you're only able to keep up in the race and not accumulate resources, it can be a real issue for them. And it's one of the big benefits of having a big barrel engine with your Arceus deck. You can be the one disrupting constantly throughout the game. Yeah, absolutely. We do see that Charizard coming down here. We do see the Marnie. Tord's hand had like boss's orders, two rare candy. <laughs> I don't think he had a Drizzle or an Inteleon right. or a way to search them. So. On the one hand, yay, new hand. On the other hand, Marnie doesn't put the cards back into your deck. It puts them on the bottom of your deck. It's going to be hard for Tord to find a rare candy. And Jose doesn't really need much else this turn. He can simply retreat his Bidoof into Arceus and initiate this prize race whilst powering up his Charizard V on the bench. Yeah, and this is perfect. This is everything you're looking for as an Arceus player. You go and use that Trinity Nova, you deal 200 damage, more than enough to KO that size, but enough to KO it three times over. <laughs> then you get your free energy that can be attached to any of your Pokemon V in any way that you like. But all you do is put the free energy onto a Charizard, because Charizard is good. And Charizard does a huge amount of damage, but Charizard is crazy expensive. <laughs> Arceus is cool with that. Then you, you know, you weave in a bit of Magma Basin as well. And all of a sudden, that Charizard, which when we first saw it, we were like, yay, it, it three. Oh, wait, no, it's too expensive. Sorry. Yeah. Now it becomes properly viable. Yeah, Arceus really did open the floodgates for all sorts of <laughs> V&V Max Pokemon that we'd never even considered before for exactly that purpose. I mean, look at the amount of energy that was accelerated just on turn two, already six energy on the field. And uh, also thanks to that Magma Basin, Jose's deck has even more acceleration at his disposal. Let's see how the Marnie has treated Tord. I at least saw a level ball here so we can begin to do the Shady Dealing dance. Yeah, if nothing else, we've got level ball for Shady Dealing, so things can be happening. I don't know if he's got enough in hand to be able to get the Inteleon out this turn, but even if he does, he needs a two energy. And, you know, losing that energy on the Sobble basically meant he was giving up the attack this turn, which I know is probably always going to happen, but it's still got to be a little bit disappointing. Yeah, and Vikavolt's a bit of an awkward one. As good as it is against uh, Palkia and even Arceus Inteleon to an extent, it's pretty bad against Arceus Bibarel because they just have a much... Uh, naturally higher count of supporter cards in their decks anyway, that they're far less disrupted by the Vika Bolt because Jose's already got everything in play he needs and the Vika Bolt just does such mediocre damage. So I wonder if Tord is going to take another turn just trying to develop his board and maybe look to weave in a Charizard on a later turn um, or if he's going to try and navigate a different path here. There are certainly a few options. And yeah, you know, when you're using that Inteleon, 
when you're using that Inteleon engine, there's lots of ball search for Inteleon, lots of item cards, really get shut down by item lock. Whereas, like you say, with the Bidoof, you need to get that out. You're not playing the Inteleon, which means you're doing the far more traditional, hey, I'm playing a bunch of draw supporters. So it's, it doesn't seem like this is the matchup Tord was hoping for. It's not a matchup you really should have been Tekken against because it's not, there's not going to be enough of these in the field to make it really worth Tekken against it. But then when you run into it round two, it becomes super awkward because you've got to play against it. But we do have Raihan here, and we do have the Vika Bolt, and you do have... Uh, I'm speed lightning energy as well coming. Ought to be speed hand. lightning energy. Draws two cards and it's a lightning energy. Yeah, he just plays two copies of the speed lightning energy as a bit of an upgrade to the basics. Of course, they're not recyclable, um, but he's going to try and just slow down Jose as best he can here. The good news is the Vika Vault is currently out of range of a one hit KO uh, with no choice but established. So this Vika Vault will at least spare toward a turn uh, whilst putting a little bit of prep damage onto the Arceus V Star. Yeah, it's not very much, so that's the problem. You're just not doing enough damage with a Viker Vault here. You are at least, you know, stopping, but you're stopping the item cards, but you've got to do something with that. You've got to be setting up your board a little bit more. Now, we do see a low tad in hand very now, spicy. Yeah. which <laughs> is very lovely. <laughs> this is one way he can really ramp up the damage of that uh, Viker Vault V, of course. And ideally for Tord, because of this item lock, it's just more difficult for Jose to find all sorts of pieces along the way. Tord's had to spend a couple scoop up net very early on here, which is never something you like to see, um, but sh surely it means that he's eyeing up uh, more deals here for access to all sorts of plays on the next turn. Yeah, the shady dealings are absolutely vital. All you need to do is get your Drizzle or your Inteleon out, search for any trainers, and it, it's really changed the way we build decks, because whereas it used to be lots of three and four of, lots of draw supporters, lots of consistency, really upping your chances of getting stuff, you know, there's two speed lightning energy because we can grab it with right hand. You're, you're seeing so many one-off trainer cards, because if you're playing this Drizzle Inteleon engine, as long as they're not prized, you're just going to be able to find them when you need to. So, you know, sometimes it's a second copy just in case it's prized, rather than the three or four we used to see for almost everything. So the Evolution Incense coming to Tord's hand for next turn. He's got a couple more Sobble to bench this turn. Could even try and weave in that low tad uh, on this turn. And he will just be getting a little bit of chip damage in with his Vika Volt V here. Yeah, it's not a huge amount of damage, but it's nice that it's easy to get some damage out. And now we've finally got that low tad. And we could even see a super zap cannon, because right. that, I mean, we have a choice about would deal 320. Is that enough? That's I huge. I don't think that's <laughs> enough for it. Is Charizard not 330? Charizard is the big 330. Yeah, I thought it was. So it's even with the Ludicolo and choice, but you're still 30 damage short, which is not an ideal situation. It does seem like Jose is actually going to take advantage of Tord Stormy Mountain here to hey get that flying Pikachu V. That is cheeky. That's very twisty. <laughs> the Stormy Mountains isn't really a stadium card we've seen much of, but it's a great pickup for Jose to get this flying Pikachu V onto the board for free here because the Charizard's already um, able to attack, so why not just start powering up the Pikachu as your next backup, knowing already, once again, he's already seen the Radiant Charizard in game one, so he can start playing around that as well. Yeah, now we see the Charizard. We've got the evolution there. We've got free energy on it. Jose is starting to really build up his board nice. He was still two energy away from a G Max Wildfire, but 300 damage is huge. Now we do see the Giovanni, and it's got to be the low tad. Had to be the low tad, because now that's 100 damage taken off the board, and another prize for Jose. And we get to accelerate free energy, which, I mean, at this stage, you're, you're going to. You're quite close to having Charizard and Flying Pikachu ready to roll. Exactly. And uh, he's going to take a knockout. I think it's a pretty interesting choice. For me, I value the Drizzle quite highly there because Tord spent so many nets early and also grabbed an Evolution Intense with his final deal. You know that Tord has the potential to be really popping off. And look how many energy are coming onto this Charizard. Six energies on it now. It's really ready to rumble. This is good, though, because Charizard's attack asks you to discard exactly two energy. Yep. So in an attack like this, if you think you can tank a hit, and let's face it, you can tank a hit, why not? 
Why not pile energy on there? Because now there's six on there. You attack, go down to four, attach the turn. Yay, I can attack again. So I absolutely love this from Jose. Basically saying, look, I've seen a lot of your deck at this stage. You cannot one hit KO Charizard. I want to just sweep with Charizard at this stage. Tord has a lot of options now, has rare candy and evolution incense, so could be doing a lot of shady dealing with Inteleon. He could uh, grab uh, one for a rare candy play now and get another scoop of net and then double dip again. Also has the option to Irida a ton, so there will be a, a lot of shady dealings going this turn. There are, but I don't think there's going to be a KO. If my maths is correct here, Vikavolt can do 190. With a choice bout, goes up to 220. With the five already on there, goes up to 270. And once again, weirdly, this is a theme this morning, Joe, 10 <laughs> damage short. Let's see if Tord can navigate this, as it's looking like a boss's orders as well as scoop up net are some of the choices for Tord. Yeah, you need to get the Pikachu. Yeah, I feel like that's his biggest threat right now, and it has exactly 190 hit points, so it could be a super zap cannon target that Tord's eyeing up here. I think at this stage, I think item lock is kind of irrelevant at this yeah. stage because Charizard's got six energy on. Arceus is out there ready to accelerate more, but that flying Pikachu can shut down all your basic attackers and you kind of need your basic attackers. So, yeah, I, th I think I'm, if, if I'm told, I'm going after the Pikachu here because it's too awkward. We do see a rare candy into a Deleon now and that's double shady dealings. Looking like just deals for more deals for more deals. <laughs> it's going to be level ball and scoop up net for a following turn. That's always the deal with these Inteleon engines that you want to have a play for the next turn and give yourself just as many options as possible. When you have so much flexibility with the deck, you need to just keep your options open throughout the entire game. And that's what this Inteleon is looking to do here. Yeah, I love this. I, I love the setup. I love the thoughtful play. I love the way Tor's navigating this. I do still get the feeling this is a fairly rough matchup, though, because you can see how Tor's going to take the first couple prizes. We're going to get the KO on Flying Pikachu. It's going to be lovely. However, what's he doing about the Charizard? I think his dream scenario is that you can rare candy Ludicolo on a turn you use your Radiant Charizard into oh. the Charizard V Max. Oh, that's what he does about the Charizard. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the dream scenario. I don't know how easy it is for him to piece it together, especially because Jose's already dealt with a Lotad in the early stages. So Tord may be debating whether this level ball is committed to Lotad number two or for another Sobble here. It's all good. I, I think I love the Lotad play here. Because <laughs> the issue I find is you've got to deal with that Charizard, and you're right, there is a way to deal with it, and it is... The you, boy, there it, he is. There's the low tad. <laughs> I think you nailed it, Joe. You've got to use Charizard with yeah. Ludicolo to deal with Charizard. Yeah, because 330 hit points, that's just absurd. But the fact that a Radiant Charizard can get to 350 <laughs> on a one prize attacking Pokemon, it's absolutely uh, miraculous. And uh, Tord is going to be... Boss is ordering up the Flying Pikachu, certainly this turn. We saw him deal for it very early on in the turn and will be super zap cannoning, keeping up with the prize race um, and trying to bounce back with Radiant Charizard in the late game. That is when it's a star player. Absolutely. And I, I we can kind of see how it's working out for Tord here. Take out the Pikachu, try and get that big turn to KO the Charizard. Then you're only one prize away from winning. The question then becomes whether Jose can actually take enough prizes, bearing in mind you've got the two prize of Ecovol, but then you're going to have to take two single prizes. So I like this. I like the way, I don't know if it's going to be enough in the end, but I think Tord is doing that thing where Tord's basically going, hey, I'm one of the best players in the world. I've got a plan. Yep, and Tord is going to grab those two prize cards over to Jose now. And what's the best thing he can come up with? I think Marnie is probably his strongest play here, unless he can boss his orders up the low tad again. I think bossing up the low tad or potentially finding a choice bout to just get a one hit kill on the Vikavolt, sure. go down to two prizes remaining. And I, I know the Vikavolt's not a huge threat at the moment. I do like going after the low tad, if I'm honest with you. I liked it last time and I like it again if it happens here. I think he's got Evolution Incense to try and grab a bit barrel for a few cards. He doesn't currently have boss's orders available to him. He also has a right hand option if he wants to forego Gust this turn and just take the two prize knockout, which also does seem like a strong option. Yeah, that seems to be where we're going with this. I don't mind this at all. This seems like an absolutely nice play. We are searching at any one card here with right hand, so whatever is needed, 
i.e. choice belt, can be searched out with right hand, because these item cards can be awkward. That's why things like Starbirth and things like Shady Dealings are so good. Pokemon are easy to find. Item and supporter cards, they're not so easy to find, so it's nice to have an engine that can do it. And yeah, Bibirel can potentially find it, but you're kind of drawing three, four, five cards and crossing your fingers, so love using the right hand to get the choice bout, take the kill on the Vikavolt, and then kind of hope at this stage, because what does Tor do? I mean, are you going to try and get Lotad with Gusting to take out Charizard? That would be a great play. This is insane. That's asking a lot. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. What's hilarious is Jose is also playing those Magma Basins, so uh, it can be a great way for Tor to actually like recover the Charizard and get that Fire Energy back over and over again. So <laughs> Jose may be holding off on those Magma Basins this series. I, I think as soon as you see that Radiant Charizard, it becomes, yeah, I'll play Magma Basin if I really want it. I'm not just going to play it as a matter of course. Because a lot of times, if you're playing four stadiums, if you think you're going to win the stadium war, you just chuck it down. It's going to be fine. But you need to be aware of when your stadiums are helping your opponent more than they're helping you. And Jose continuing to tempo out. I believe we did see the choice belt was the um, selection from the Raihan. Yeah, absolutely going to go on to the Arceus. The Basin does actually come into play to bounce a Stormy Mountains. He's not getting any value out of it per se, but he is simply going to announce another Trinity Nova for a KO here and pass things over to Tord. Taking another two prize swing. Tord from this point on um, is on a clock. He has to really get in there with the Charizard and he has to do it now. Yeah, I think it needs to be Charizard two turns in a row. And the thing is, if Tord can take Charizard KOs two turns in a row, that's actually it, that's game. Yep. Because there are no, there's no two prize Pokemon on Tord's field, which means that it's going to be in Tord. Basically, Tord's on the front foot, so to speak. Yep. It is up to Tord if Tord wins this game. It's a lot to ask for. Charizard KO down to two prizes. Jose takes a prize, and then Tord can KO for the win. It's it's going to be awkward. There's a lot that's needed. It's going to be combo heavy. But it is absolutely a possibility at this stage. But there has to be. Now, the good news is, well, that five damage on the Arceus, we don't need Choice Bout, we don't need yep. any damage modifiers. All Tord needs is just Radiant Charizard, Energy, Pivot, that's it. And I think the Magma Basin played from Jose that turn could also be helping it. Uh, well, it doesn't Tord even need energy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's going to make life even easier for Tord here. So I think we can pretty much guarantee that there's going to be a Charizard attack this turn. Uh, to go down to two prize cards for Tord. It's really if he's able to develop maybe even second Lotad or just how many nets and ball such cards he has remaining um, in order to defend himself against the possible Roxanne or Marnie play from Jose next turn. Yeah, has he recovered a Lotad or is it still in the discard? There's one in the discard pile, but he does, of course, play um, the Clara as an option for him. Ah, there. so he would need the Clara to get it back. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. I needs to get the Lotad back in hand in order to actually be able to play it again, because you're right. I think a second Lotad here would be huge because, yes, Radiant Charizard can take out Charizard V Max, but only with the Ludicolo. It is right. a huge part of it. So we do see the quick ball for the Charizard and just sneaky little extra play there discarded the fire energy with the quick ball so that it can be attacked with Magma Basin. It's a way to not have to use your attachment for the turn, which means you can actually just use your attachment for the turn to retreat Inteleon if you want to. Yeah, it's free. It's fantastic for Tord in this spot. And he's just going to eye up a few more options here. The thing about the Radiant Charizard, it's such a big threat at this point that if Jose even chases the one Lotad that's in play, there's already another Arceus V that Tord can simply then bring the Charizard back into the active and boss his orders up. So I think Tord's actually in a very strong position now that the uh, Magma Basin's been played. If Tord can find some gusting next turn, I adore Tord's position here because you've got to recover a Charizard. Oh, and I love that because now there's Shady Dealings next turn. All which over is the gonna, shop. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to make it easy. So at this stage, Jose needs hand disruption because... Honestly, all we're going to need is gusting and recover the Charizard, and that's game. I kind of feel like getting rid of your Tool Scrapper now and just any other card that's not helpful is probably worthwhile. There we go. Yeah, get rid of the even the Air Balloon, just a deny a pivot from Jose. Why not? Um, you can also play your own Cape of Toughness. I feel like you're not getting any additional value from it at this point. You can even get a turn attachment onto one of your Drizzile or Sobble. Um, if you really feel like that's necessary. No, oh, I love that. Pivot for next turn. No, I adore yeah. this. Because now it means literally you just need gusting and recover the Charizard. Everything else is on board. It is interesting to see the Shady Dealings this turn. 
I was I was thinking maybe hold it, but what are we going for? Oh, have we seen a support on this turn? No, he's still got support available to him. All yeah. He's, all he's found so far is that quick ball. So that's why we're seeing it this turn. <laughs> for the Roxanne. It's an interesting one, because he's basically holding on to game, I believe, because uh, he had the Inteleon and the Ludicolo, and they were basically the, the only two cards required, um, because you could Clara Basin retreat and just get the Charizard back and Rare Candy. But I think Todd's looking for a different route here, and Jose's not been able to establish that big barrel still uh, in his prize card. So the Roxanne could be a little bit of extra disruption here. I think Todd's essentially going for Roxanne so he doesn't get Roxanne. <laughs> I mean, yeah, quite frankly, because you can have game in hand, but if you think there's a good enough chance that you're actually going to end up being hurt, and I love this, pow pad it back in, because we think we're going to need gusting in order to finish out this game. So use pow pad to put boss's orders back into the deck, increase your chances of having this. We've got, and there we do see the Cape of Toughness. Then the Roxanne comes down. Only playable if your opponent has three or fewer prize cards remaining. Each player shuffles a hand into their deck. And if you played it, you get six new cards. That's a nice hand. Your opponent gets two, which is not a nice <laughs> hand. Because you can't play it in the early game, like older cards, like N, for instance, it's not a four of staple. It is a one of tech card. But in decks like these Inteleon Engine decks that can cherry pick these cards so easily, it is a, although it's a one card tech, it is still a staple. You're not bringing this deck without one copy of Roxanne. Yeah, and Todd's got himself into a very good position here. If Jose chases down Lotad, he's recovered the one copy of Boss's orders now, so he should be in a good state. And uh, if the uh, Radiant Charizard is simply knocked out, we can Clara it back and try and take a KO that way. So feels like he's in a good spot because he will have the option to Ludicolo on the same turn. We are going to see the Hisuian Heavy. He has the option to trade it out for a Vikavolt if he wants to, simply because Vikavolt could be like a card to thin and you can just put it onto the board if you'd really like. Or you can just choose to forego the Hisuian Heavy if you'd prefer. I feel like the Vikavolt's not getting into the mix again yeah. this game. You can't put it onto the board because Jose's got two prizes remaining right. and a Charizard. <laughs> well, Jose would know. definitely go after it if it hit the board. Yeah, for sure. But I, I don't mind this. And certainly next turn it could be played to thin out a little bit, but. I certainly wouldn't be playing it here. No, no, we can't play it. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, it's weird. I don't know why we'd take it to hand anyway, unless we're going to discard it in some way. I mean, it's no different to having a Hisuian right. Heavy Ball in hand, really, honestly. The Hisuian can be thinned, though, right? It's just in the discard pile at that point. Yeah, I'll give you that one. We do, however, just see the KO on the Arceus. Tord goes down to two prizes remaining. And what did not look like a very interesting game two at the start has turned into a very interesting game two. And Jose, he has Boss's Orders available to him. I think he also has uh, Professor's Research in his hand. I believe it's the, yeah, it's going to be the boss's orders play. So Ooh. this means the Radiant Charizard is safe and Tor simply needs boss's orders to close out the game here. Jose is saying this low tad is too dangerous to be kept around. I'm going to try and force Gust. I, I prefer not Gusting here because now Tor needs a boss rather than needing Rare Candy Ludicolo, which it, it's not a huge difference, but it's a little bit more. I, I do think, though, that whichever way we, we slice this, Tord was has put himself in a phenomenal position. And so <laughs> thanks to the Cave of Toughness, we actually have to see a G Max Wildfire onto the poor little Lotad. I love that. Jose going down to just one prize card remaining. Can Tord find the crucial boss's orders that he pal padded on the previous turn to close out this game? There's Evolution Incense. Evolution Incense is gonna go and grab a Shady D Links at the Inteleon, which is gonna grab the boss's orders, which is gonna grab the Arceus, and then Charizard is gonna take a KO, and we are gonna go to a game free. Expert played by Tord. What do you expect? It's a really interesting deck that he has come up with, but you can see he's put the time in, he's got the testing, and even though he's playing some unorthodox counts and cards in his deck list, he was still able to navigate it very well. It felt like he was very behind that little poke of 50, wasn't even slowing down Jose too much, it just meant that he didn't need a choice belt on a future turn, but he sacrificed two prizes in order to get that uh, little 50 damage in, but it was enough for Tor to navigate, and because Jose is so limited to multi-prize attacking threats, uh, there's always going to be those sitting around for Tor to finish off later on. Yeah, I, I just, it was one of those games where, I, I, the games I really very strongly dislike as a player. <laughs> you're behind, you're behind, you're constantly on the verge of that one thing going wrong from which you can't recover. The whole game just seemed like, oh, it's going to go wrong. Yeah. Oh, that's it. 
<laughs> but Tord, Tord is a very methodical, very calm player. And we saw there, that was a very close game. It came down to the wire. We needed some combo bits here and there. But actually, in the end, we got a couple of... And it wasn't even the last turn. It was the last couple of turns. It was like, oh... Oh, yeah, he's got this. He sorted it. Yeah, by the way, he's just two, two attacks away. And he that's the thing. He converts into a one-prize attacking deck. He gave up a few prizes early on um, just to try and set the tempo and uh, build up his board, get his deals online. And from then on, he was completely in control. It does make me wonder what's going to happen to Radiant Charizard after this tournament. We saw Ross Corfon get through day one with it. And obviously, it's going to depend on how this shakes out and how deep Radiant Charizard goes. But there's got to be a lot of players around the around the room today just and you know watching at home thinking, hang on a second. I knew that was good, but... And it, and it doesn't have to be its own deck. Right. You know, Torn has basically got a deck of two halves here. Right. It's a Vikavolt deck that transitions into a Radiant Charizard deck. And, and here's a sneaky bit. This could be like anything. Yeah. You could take half of Tord's deck, throw it away, and replace it with a different half of a deck to, to, to fight a completely different meta. Yeah, he's expecting lots of Palkia. So in this case, it's going to be Vika Vault, Stormy Mountains, Speed Lightning Energy. But take that package out and turn it into anything you want for future formats. It's a, it's a great note to have because this could have some staying power. We know that this Radiant Charizard is crazy and just having a few little bits in those opening stages is all you need to keep up in a prize race. Absolutely. Nothing major in the prizes. A few one-offs here and there, but nothing that fills me with dread. We do see Jose starting off here with a Galarian Zigzagoon, which is not really what you want to start with. And Tor starts with a Lotad, which is not really what you want to start with, but it's nice to have it on the board early. Jose, with the early Hasurian Heavy, he has access straight away to an Arceus V now, or Crobat V, if he would prefer. There we go. And simply because he has a Quick Ball already in his hand, he's going to opt to go for his one copy of Crobat V. It should help him on his quest to get a Turn 1 attachment and Arceus down here. It is very interesting that kind of you have that one of Crobat Prize, which is usually a bad thing. There's two Arceus in the... Yeah, he plays four. Okay. That's We're all good. <laughs> not loving it, but that's all right. We do, however, have that one copy of Crobat that we did get with the Hisuian Heavy Ball, which means that instead of it being prized being a bad thing, it being prized gives you access to it nicely. And there we see the Quick Ball for the Arceus. So like you said, no, no huge problems here. We got the Arceus. Life is good. And Jose is starting off with what looks like a pretty nice turn. No supporter turn one, but you can Crobat. Yeah, and he's also already got a Fire Energy in hand. If he simply wants to attach pass, that's fine too. Give yourself access to the star buff that basically fixes every issue you could possibly <laughs> uh, come across. Tord starts off with Lotad. The Call for Family isn't quite as strong as Keep Calling. You get one less basic Pokemon, but it's still a handy option to have as your first attack for turn as we actually see an energy search come to the top of his hand, the draw for turn there. Also has the option to use Stormy Mountains if he wishes here. Yeah, and there is a Radiant Charizard in hand, but that's not really an early game Pokemon, so we might see that held on to. Really depends how aggressive Tor wants to go into it. I mean, certainly if a Magma Basin hits the board and Tor can kind of cheekily get some extra damage <laughs> as we go, maybe that's a nice option. But I don't know. For now, we've got Lotad, we've got Energy Search, so we are going to see a call for family, which is rather lovely. Yeah, just a couple Sobble, it's not ideal, but Tor is quickly going to look for his prize cards once again. Always important. Uh, he plays that Hasuian Heavy Ball, so sometimes you might want to access some of those pieces if there are any key basics. But I imagine the Lotal is just going to grab a couple Sobble here, just a mini uh, keep calling. And I imagine we won't see any two prize Pokemon coming into play this turn. No, I would imagine not. But just a couple of Sobble, get your Lotad. I mean, if you could avoid a turn one KO, give yourself a little bit of breathing room if you're told, that would be amazing. But we've kind of seen this two games in a row. Jose's actually pretty good at getting that turn two Arceus attack for the KO. And we've already got Arceus, Energy, and a Balloon on the Zigzagoon. What's interesting, Joe? The Tord does opt to put down the two prize Pokemon. Because you're putting it down alongside the Charizard, you're almost threatening Jose to say, yeah, take this two prizer. I can then <laughs> immediately respond with my Charizard. So it's an interesting one. I think Tord respecting the fact that Jose has real capacity to just spam Marnie against him. Yep. You just want to develop that Charizard when you can. And I don't mind this. If you get an opportunity to get the energy on there, whether that's manual attachment, whether that's Magma Basin, just the opportunity to get that energy on nice and early is always a very, very nice thing. And, I mean, at least Tor's getting set up here. We've not got those, you know, horrendous hands we've seen in the past couple of games. We've got some Sobble ready to evolve to Shady Dealings. 
it would be lovely, but we've actually already seen the Arceus V-Star come down. So Jose can easily just starburst, get that double turbo energy. So I think it's fair to say there's going to be a KO here. Yeah, it's an immense hand, really. He's uh, been able to thin his hand down to Crobat up to six, and then he'll be able to uh, V-Star power if he thinks he still needs to grab even more pieces. And he's already got that KO established by Drawing the six of Crobat first, it gives him the option to aggressively boss his orders if he's able to find a double turbo here. Yeah, I love this. This is working beautifully. Crobat to six is always a good feeling. Cro and it's, Crobat's another one of those that you go back a, a couple of years and it's everywhere. It's a staple <laughs> in every deck. Nowadays, it's more of a tech in these decks like Jose's that aren't playing the Inteleon engine, the Genesect engine, things like that. But it does give you six new cards. It doesn't seem to have helped as much as it could have. No, not much help there. Can Ultra Ball doesn't have many easy discards. That would be his second Lightning Energy hitting the discard pile if he chooses to discard. So instead, he can get rid of his, one of his Basins, or he throws away his Flying Pikachu. I don't really like that, honestly. Uh, the Flying Pikachu is a very strong option here when uh, Tord is so reliant on basic attacking Pokemon. We do know that Jose does play uh, Ordinary Rod, so he can get it back later. Uh, but it still doesn't feel great. I'd, I'd like to start powering it up this turn, honestly. Yeah, and it, well, firstly, yes, you're using it later. Secondly, there's more steps to go through, and you're right. I mean, we've seen the deck for a little while now. We've got single prize attackers from Tord. We've got those, oh, not single prize, basic. Right. Single stain. <laughs> That's what we've got from Tord. And Flying Pikachu does seem to be a really good counter to that. It's also worth noting that at least for the minute, there's no more Arceus available to Jose. It doesn't really need them. But with one in play, one in the discard, two in the prize, and there's something to keep an eye on. And we do see it combined with Amani. Honestly, yeah, I know the Flying Pikachu's hit the discard, and yeah, I know there's no Arceus around for the minute, but we're still seeing the first prize going to be taken. We're still seeing that Charizard being powered up. We're still seeing Tord being Marnied here. So this is still a really strong position for Jose. Yeah, and as we saw, he was happy to hunt the Lotad in... Uh, that second game, so he's going to continue to do the same thing, try and stay out of range as much as possible. He does initiate the prize race, takes a KO with Trinity Nova, and will once again be powering up a big Charizard V here. Yeah, I love that Charizard V, love the damage, of course. It's doing arguably a little bit too much damage. I mean, we've got all of those <laughs> things like Palkia, which, you know, get quite, they get 220 quite easily. Jose's gone right. I'm going to go up, I'm going to be able to hit 300 or more, and Tor's not bringing anything with more than 210. But never mind, that Charizard is still going to get there, and we might see what we saw in the last game where we see another Trinity Nova onto Charizard, you know, really putting too much energy on, allowing you to stream those attacks. For Tord, we've got the Vikavolt in the active here, and now we've got a Suin Heavy Ball coming down. So gives you the option to switch a basic Pokemon in your prizes with that Suin Heavy Ball, if that's what you're into. Yeah, in some regards, I would have liked to have seen Jose as well starburst for the choice belt and proactively play it down to be threatening the Vika Vault immediately because Tord can be in the same position he was last time. He could try and go for a Melanie attach onto the Vika Vault this turn or a Raihan attach, uh, and he can poke the Arceus once again. Then he can try and super zap cannon <laughs> the Crobat that's now on the bench, which we saw last game. And then he's got the exact same map as last game. It is starting to look very, very familiar. And, you, and we do see the Raihan yeah. coming down, so I think you've <laughs> nailed it there, Joe. We're going to see an energy, and of course, we will be needing, well, actually, not, honestly, not a huge amount. I mean, that choice belt would have been huge. There was potentially the option, but Jose clearly thinking there are other cards off the star buff that were more important at that moment. Right. But out of range now. Can only hit 180 with that double turbo energy, bringing it down by 20. Choice belt would do the perfect number as it is. You can attack big into it. But all you're really doing is giving Tor time. And as we saw in the previous game, you do not want to give Tor time. And obviously, it's a speed lightning energy. That was always going to be the play. Yep, a couple of additional cards, as well as getting the attachment required for a paralyzing bolt. So we're getting a couple of additional cards. Wasn't or hasn't yet been able to establish many more of his Inteleon engine. Uh, as I say that, we are seeing a level <laughs> ball. So we can continue to see potentially more Drizzle action here. I'd be a little bit concerned about just having too few deals available for the following turn, because as we see, he likes to springboard off of a ton of deals and nets all at <laughs> one go. Yeah, and that gives you absolutely everything you need. Tord's deck often needs combos or saying, hey, you need to recover the Charizard, get the energy, get the choice belt, get the gusting. There's a lot to ask for. So having those shady dealings, allowing you to cherry pick the very best cards at that particular time from your deck, 
always a huge advantage. For now, it looks like we are going to be able to have Vikervolt just doing that. A little bit of a poke damage and no item cards for Jose for this turn, but another Marnie. Yeah, I think this is probably the best thing Jose can do here. If you're not taking a KO, uh, you simply have to disrupt Tord. We saw him grab uh, Evolution Incense and you just want to disrupt that at all costs, make it more difficult for Tord to super zap cannon through you. And I do like this as well, the payment of retreat yeah. into the Charizard. We see the double turbo energy as well. That fulfills the five energy attack cost for a G-Max Wildfire. This is the one way Jose could have found a KO this turn. And I like this. Essentially, Jose went, well, last game I tried doing it with the Arceus and I was just a little bit short and it didn't work out very well. So you know what? This time I'm just going to get the KO with Charizard. And that really puts Tord on the back foot because it's essentially rolling from a turn behind the previous game. And it's worth pointing out, there's no Lotad on the board. There will not be a return KO this turn. There is, however, a Roxanne. So that does mean that Jose is going to go down to a two-card hand. And... I mean, Tord needs to just hang on for a turn or two here, disrupt Jose, and then that's what... I mean, we could just see a two-hit KO with Charizard, but that's, that's asking a lot. Well, you're hoping that with the Roxanne, it's difficult to chain the G-Max Wildfire. That would be nice. Uh, and that's really the hope, I think, for Tord, because 160 hit points on the Radiant Charizard is a lot of hit points. So maybe you're hoping you can tank for a turn. Maybe even just sitting and tanking with an Inteleon in your active position is another play you can go for. <laughs> yeah, that would work. Get a low tad down potentially to evolve up in the future and just tank for a minute. We do see a scoop up net though. And what are we seeing up in the active? This is gonna give away a bit of the thinking. Yeah. So we do see the Radiant Charizard going active. It's not yet a one prize. It's not yet a one energy attacker, I believe. No, we're not there. So I don't think we're gonna see a Radiant Charizard attacking here. I think Tord is just hoping that it's difficult for Jose to chain the wildfires. Oh, it's an evolution incense, and we know what's coming here, Joe. Yep, it's the barrel time. We're it's the barrel time. Dustbrain sizes for Jose, and it's going to be a big few cards here. Can he find oh, another evolution incense? Just being thinned out of the deck, so we're going to get more value from the incisors here. Able to draw up until you have five cards in your hand, and these are going to be big cards for Jose. Yeah, this is fantastic. That is pretty much the perfect draw you could have. Now you're essentially being rock sand to a hand of the double turbo. He does get the double turbo, which means there will be a KO on the Charizard. And as well as game two ended up going for Tord, and as much as this game started looking like game two, this is not game two all over again. We do see the attachment onto the Arceus. And we do see Radiant Heatran finally hitting the board. And I, I like all of this. I like getting the KO with the Arceus, because then you get the KO, but you're also accelerating the energy onto the Charizard, ready for next turn. And then you can start building up that Radiant Heatran. And this is a stage where I do want to see a Magma Basin, because I want that Radiant Heatran to get rolling. We want to see it in action. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jose being a little bit crafty here, going to have to pay retreat. Had the option to Wildfire again if he wanted to. I didn't mind the Wildfire, honestly, because uh, there's still no Lotad for Tord, so you knew that the Charizard was going to be sticking around regardless. And you're basically just trading um, energy out of your deck for things in the discard pile by doing the Payment of Retreat. You are still deck thinning energies, of course. Uh, maybe he was eyeing up the Radiant Heatran, like you said, and just forcing more Gust from Tord on future turns. Yeah, the difficulty here is we're not in the same position as last game. Now it's over to Jose. Jose takes the prize, and it's basically one for Jose, two for Tord, one for Jose, two for Tord, one for Jose. <laughs> oh, wait, the game's over at this stage. Right. So this is where we need to see Tord jumping the prize race in some regard, tanking a turn, you know, basically denying Jose a prize. He's not going to put a two-prizer down, but he needs to do something. Because if Jose just takes a prize the next two turns, that's going to be the match. Yeah, I think he's Tord's just been a little bit slow to the races here, unfortunately. We are going to see a shady deal. That's where things kick off here towards one of his only actions was to scoop up net last turn in order to grab this Drizzle back. And we now see the evolution incense for Inteleon for the double dip shady deal. I wonder what is up towards sleeve here. How is he going to navigate the remainder of this game? I mean, it's got to be a Charizard KO this turn. It's got to be a Charizard KO this turn. The good news is Charizard on the bench is not ready to go. As it stands, there's no backup attack of a Jose here. So if we could get a Charizard with some kind of disruption, that would be lovely. I, I, it's going to be awkward, of course, because Roxanne is generally played as a one-off. And I'm, yeah, in Tor's deck, it is just played as a one-off. So we get a scoop up there and an energy search. Yeah, and I mean, the Roxanne even is 
just pretty poor when there's a big barrel on board regardless. And we see lightning energy, and it's going to be a Vika Vault coming down by the looks of things. So Tord once again trying to sit behind a slightly tankier Pokemon to buy him some turns. It's going to scoop up net into a Sobble here. Also going to see another shady deal from Drizzile. Let's see what Tord's cherry picking. Going to be an interesting one. It looks, oh, there's Tool Scrapper there, but there's not really much to go for. No, he's gone off of that, which is kind of expected. It is a Cape of Toughness. I kind of like this because you put that on the Viker Vault, you're then sitting there with 250 HP, and sure, Charizard will get you, but that's about the only thing that's gonna. Charizard, just a huge amount of... Um, oh, it's boss's away. orders onto yeah. the Bivarel. Yeah, give me time, I guess, is towards answer here. Just wants to be able to slow down Jose and hope that there's no outs to move this Bibarel. A couple of these double turbo have already gone, of course. Uh, a wildfire, a payment of retreat early on with an Arceus. Will we see any more pivoting options for Jose? He plays one air balloon, I believe one copy of Switch as well. And he does, I believe, max out copies of the uh, double turbo energy. Yeah, so there are a few cards in that are absolutely could work as that pivot. What do we see off the Ultra Ball? Oh, just a failed search, so just filling out the hand a little bit. Obviously, that Industrious Incisors draws until you've got five cards in your hand. So sometimes Ultra Ball, hey, I've got three fewer cards. That means I'm drawing three more cards. And it's not exciting, but it does give you more access to more cards, which becomes exciting. <laughs> We're going to see a Magma Basin come down at this point for Jose. Love it. So we can get some additional energy acceleration in. And also, again, thinning an additional card for this big, big barrel. If you play an energy from your hand, you get to see an extra card, but you remove one of your outs because yes. you then cannot attach a double turbo energy to your big barrel. Then you're looking at exactly for switch. Yeah, that's not exactly. Yeah, because the Avalon is already on the Galarian Zigzagoon. We do see it being played here. Of course, one nice thing about that Magma Base, and with Charizard discarding two energy to attack, essentially what you do there is just attach the turn Magma Base, and then it does allow you to stream those attacks once you're up and rolling. So it's a very powerful deck. We're not really seeing it in, it, in all its glory here because we're not taking those giant KOs, but we are still <laughs> seeing it work quite nicely. Now we see... It's a boss's orders minus one, just to see an additional card from Big Barrel. No help there oh, from the two cards. Doesn't get so. it. I imagine Jose will be using Basin. I'd like to see the Radiant Heatran start to get powered up. Here we yep. go. It's another one prize attacking threat, making it even more difficult for Tor to navigate his prize map. Tord only plays one copy of Boss's Orders and one Pal Pad, so if Jose at this point can weave in the one prize, it's going to be even more headache for Tord. It's going to get very, very annoying. It is worth noting we are under two minutes remaining in the round, and Jose, I mean, Tord at this stage, you've got to think, is, is probably not going to be winning. It's, it's a lot to ask for. You've got to take three multiple prize KOs. It's possible. It's not impossible yet. But it's getting very, very close. But Jose's actually got to take those last two prizes to get the win. So that Bibarella's got to come out of the active. We've got to see some attackers getting rolling here. Heatran's almost there. Charizard's almost there. Arcus actually is there. But that Bibarella's got to come out of the active, because if it stays there for another couple of turns, time's going to run out. Melanie is a selection for Tord. Grabbing three additional cards. The Vikavolt is finally coming into the active position. Tord is playing at a decent pace here. So you feel like he certainly has a plan because he's really going through the motion. So he's not just trying to wind down the game. He's actually finding avenues here. Oh, I like this. See Evolution Incense for uh, the quick shooting in Teleon. And he's going to try and sit this barrel up in the active for a couple turns whilst pinging down some bench threats. And worth noting that, you know, Jose might have been going for the switch, but if you're item locked, you are you can draw the switch as much as you want. You right. just can't play the switch. So you're almost looking at a manual retreat there with a double turbo energy, but there's no attacker other than Arcus ready to go, so and that's not gonna be getting a KO. No. And it no. will then get KO'd back. So Arcus is not a terribly good option here, because you're two hit KOing while getting KO'd in the middle. Quick shooting is going to go on to the Charizard VMAX from Tord. And we are going to see a little 50 damage paralyzing bolt denying the switch as an out um, for Jose. He does have a professor's research, and he looks like he's powering up the Radiant Heatran at this point. Just trying to have multiple threats around the board here. The Heatran really is starting to get very intimidating. A 70 damage multiplier <laughs> is huge on this Heatran. Uh, right now, it's threatening 280 damage, and it's only climbing. 
<laughs> I know, it's ridiculous. It's one of those cars, I mean, like all the Radiant Pokemon, on paper it's really good. You just need to find the right deck in which to use it. And a deck like this with Magma Basin, it becomes a very, very powerful card indeed. So this is, this is very, very important. As it stands, I mean, do you just give up the prize on a Bibarel? The problem for Jose at the moment is time. If we're in an untimed situation here, you give up the Bibarel, nobody cares, jobs are good at <laughs> With time being as it is, I am totally okay with throwing away a double turbo energy to retreat it, taking a KO with Arcus, even though I know I'm going to get return KO'd, or at least, you know, trying to two-hit KO. But we do just have confirmation that time has been called and Jose is turn zero. So that means that Jose's got this turn and one more in order to win the game. Good news is there is a two prize Pokemon on Tord's field. Yep. So Jose doesn't need to get a KO this turn. Yeah, Tord has to probably Roxanne and retreat this v -Cobalt. That's probably the best defensive play he could have. Because um, at this point, the Barrel could just manually attach one of those final double turbo energies to retreat. So um, Tord's not completely safe hiding behind the Paralyzing Bolt for another turn. So we will see a shady deal here from Tord. I think it's very easily in his range. He can pal pad back the Roxanne and try and make it that little bit more awkward uh, for Jose. But again, the Barrel's still in play, so it's not really changing a whole lot. No, I mean, at this stage, Tord can't win the game. There's no way Tord takes six prizes. Tord's, Tord's chances of winning are gone. Tord is playing for a draw or a tie. Jose can win the game, but it's got to be next turn. Vikavolt KO, that is the only possible option. So we would need some kind of pivoting option, plus gusting, you've got to imagine, plus Charizard having a double turbo energy, or even the Heatran at this stage, actually. Yeah, yeah the Heatran's Heat well in range, yeah. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> we would just need gusting plus pivoting, and that would give Jose the win on the final turn of the game. Seeing Scoop Up Net Clara being the options for Tord being selected here. Of course, you will be leaving a one prize Pokemon in the active position, certainly, uh, this turn. Um, so maybe he's thinking that just knocking out the bit barrel with a one prizer is his best route here, just deny those little bit of extra incisor <laughs> draws. Yeah, that might be the way to go. And an attachment allows the Vika Vault now to retreat. You see Rare Candy Ludicolo for an enthusiastic dance here. You see Choice Belt coming onto Ludicolo. Lots of stylish cards coming down for Tord here. <laughs> I rather suspect most of this is really not doing anything terribly useful. It is just putting a one prizer active and hoping there's no combination. <laughs> Tord not forgetting the quick shooting, of course. Very of relevant. Of course, that's super important right now. <laughs> Clara, just a few extra actions from Tord here. Uh, but it's not changing the fact that Jose could win next turn just by finding a double turbo energy. Yeah, double turbo energy. And it would be need some gusting to try and get the, right, the boss's vault. orders. Yeah. yeah, so boss's orders, double turbo. That's what we're looking for. Or a switch boss's orders. That would work nicely. And oh, what's in his hand? We don't got have it yet. We've got boss's orders and we've got ultra ball to thin some cards. So it is down to an incisors here. Yeah, and you can just play the boss's orders before the incisors. Everybody at this stage knows what the plan is. You gust up that Viker Vault, you use the boss's orders, and you're looking for a switch or a double turbo energy off of industrious incisors. This is the very last turn of the game. It is plus three, so it's either... No, it's not the very last turn of the game. Tord has one last turn with... on which he's not going to be able to win the right. game. So it is essentially... Yep. The very last turn of the game. Either Jose wins here or we are definitely going to end in a draw. What is he going to be able to get? That is the oh boss's boy. orders. It's a big, big barrel. Three cards, two outs in the deck here. Will what do we, we see it from the barrel? Oh, we're doing it. We're doing it. He shakes it. Uh, are we going to see the dramatic? We do! Double, turbo, double turbo energy. Turbo energy. There it is. There's a retreat from the Barrel. A Radiant Magma Basin. Heatran. Even more damage for the Heatran. An absurd amount of damage. The payment of retreat from the Barrel and a big two prize KO. Jose Moreira able to win game number three on the final turn of time. That was absolutely wonderful. Really well played from both players. And we got to see Radiant Heatran not only come out, <laughs> but take the final KO and win. And that's the thing about Radiant Heatran. This is what we were saying before the game even started. It kind of sits there, yeah. and you, you want to take it out, and you know what it does, and you want to gust it and KO it, but then what are you going to do? Just, like, leave the Charizard, leave the Flying Pikachu, leave the Arceus V-Star? There are threats out there. 
so you kind of don't want to take one prize off a Radiant Heatran, right. but then if you don't take the one prize off the Radiant Heatran, that happens. Yeah, it's that ticking time bomb situation where you don't want to take a one prize, it really ruins your prize map a lot of situations. You can't always easily weave in bosses' orders alongside other supporter cards, so it does